Now, look, man, you've been around for a minute, you know, so you've seen, you know, pretty much, I think, what's mid-90s, late 90s? Uh, mid night, yeah. Like, first album I produced was 95, so obviously doing it for a bit before that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So tell us, tell us what you were doing <clears throat> before that, because I heard you got into drumming at around the age of 10 or 11. Yeah, like, um, I was, yeah, I started drumming in primary school. So that was kind of a thing I carried just or at the end of primary school. So when I hit high school, I was definitely kind of doing stuff. Ended up joining a couple of bands that were kind of like, when I was 14, I joined this band and all the dudes were like 22, 23 and stuff. Yeah. And we'd play like Sabbath covers and shit. So it was kind of, it was weird, man. I was like, used to go like, I don't know how the fuck my parents let me do it, but uh, we would go away to the country and do these gigs in hotels and stuff and just, you know, fucking sucking bongs in the back seat of this 14 year old kid just introduced to the you know, I don't know some kind of fucked up rock and roll <laughs> thing yeah but it was kind of it was kind of funny but yeah I just kept the drumming thing all the way through I, I met a I met a teacher in uh year 11 who had a um had a home studio and uh, that was like the start of kind of like oh okay I can sort of make you know do recordings you don't need like a whole band or anything you can just like multi-track stuff and mm. whatever. so that was like the beginning of the whole production thing so then yeah. if you kind of got into it through metal because obviously drumming i was like i played all kinds of shit man i played like um uh reggae and fucking african shit like whatever i don't know i just didn't really have like i was into all kinds of music so yeah it wasn't just like metal or whatever yeah and then so when did hip-hop become you know uh, a thing for you yeah, like I met a dude who uh, moved out to Australia from LA, uh, married a girl out here, and um, he was like just maybe a year older than me. And we ended up just like um, rooming a place in uh, St Kilda in Melbourne. And um, I was already kind of like making, I was kind of making beats, but I didn't know what I was, I didn't know I was making beats kind of thing. Mm. So I was like using drum machines and stuff and like multi-tracking bass and whatever. and um, and he just like had a friend back home was like feeding him uh records so like i just got introduced to all this kind of shit like i was into hip-hop a little bit but it wasn't it was definitely wasn't like my whole like bag you know what i mean yeah. so so like yeah, it was definitely like you know meeting him and just like uh sharing a house with him and and he was like an mc as well so we started a crew together and just had this asr 10 and just started making beats man just like got totally fucking hooked on just making beats and sampling and stuff so what was the first what was the name of the first group uh, it's called macronauts mm. yeah so like it's probably like 93 to maybe i think we just sort of fell apart maybe early 97 yeah and that's like when i met i met prowler probably not around 96 somewhere around there because he was living in richmond and I needed, I didn't have a DAT machine to like put my beats down from the ASR 10 onto a DAT. So I knew he had one. So we hit him up and went over to his place and st like just laid down heaps of beats from the ASR 10 onto his DAT machine. That's how I met him. And uh, yeah, around 97, he just, I was living in this warehouse in the city and he ended up coming over and uh, few, it's like it's a fucking long story, but yeah, ended up hooking up with him and um, just, yeah, just like, like the beats that I was making and just, like that was the whole enough said kind of take off from there mm. but yeah before that it was kind of like i don't know like there was no rule like um like i wasn't that aware. i mean I, yeah i knew there was like australian rap as such but like i was sort of mostly i was just like listening to american rap and that's all i was really interested in and because like the mc that was in my group was american like that was my whole headspace and it wasn't really until i met prowler and jace at enough said that i kind of like I guess I started thinking that Ozrap was kind of cool. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so who were some of the American dudes that, you know, that you that, got that into? I was, in that I was into? Yeah. Oh, man, fucking everything, like, just from everything from, like, say, 92 onwards, like, pretty much. We just, like, get kept getting fit. Like, I really liked Sophia. Um, <laughs> just Tribe Called Quest, like, all that stuff. Like, he was, because he was from L.A., like, we used to get yeah. a lot of stuff from, like, I guess Oakland groups and San Fran, like, you know, um, Souls of Mischief and stuff like that. So it was like a little bit East Coast centric, but also like stuff like Mob, Mob Deep and yeah, just 
this sort of more hardcore kind of East Coast shit. Mm. That's the stuff I wanted to make. Like, I guess like my whole early beat making style was sort of based around beat miners. I just wanted to be beat miners, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the <laughs> most traditional boom bap <laughs> yeah, sound so like, out. Oh yeah, I just want to do that. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.